Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Papa Boris here, playing some more Guild of Dungeoneering. It's a very exciting time. We're going to unlock our first Tier 2 class. So let's talk a little bit about the Tier 2 classes and some general strategy. When you get enough money to unlock things at Tier 2, you don't need to stress necessarily too much, especially if it's your first time through the game, because you'll be able to unlock everything, so you can do whatever you want, basically, and things will be fine. But if you want to have the easiest time possible, my advice is unlock a class from Tier 2, because that has the biggest power spike. Pretty much any Tier 2 class is a massive power spike over any Tier, any tier 1 class. Then unlock the permanent version of whatever your favorite blessing is. So that it lasts for the whole dungeon instead of just for the first two fights. And after that, focus on any equipment that you want to unlock in Tier 2. Now here, we just have enough to get a Tier 2 class, so let's talk about the classes. The Ranger. Not a big fan of this class, personally. So, it's got good attacks. Uh, a couple of two damage cards. These um, one block any are actually surprisingly useful. And then you get a bonus damage on your, on your next physical attack. The big thing about the Ranger is that it has the ranged trait which means that all physical attacks have the quick ability, so you, you know, break ties when it comes down to it. I'm just really bored by this class. Then we have in the magic category, the shapeshifter. Another class I find rather dreadful. So for traits, it just starts with growth one, which actually is nice. The growth one card is one magic damage, heal one. And um, the problem with this is that, you know, the having a built-in skill is good if you want to go all the way in that skill because it makes it easier to get to the top tier cards but the growth tree is just not that exciting in the third and fourth tier for me personally so i don't care about that otherwise it's just a bunch of vanilla generally good cards and then the one class besides the one i'm going to unlock that is mildly interesting to play for me is the alchemist so the alchemist has the blessed trait which i love a lot and some pretty nifty cards, some really nice magic damage, a little bit of quick damage, and a nice block, plus magic damage. The main problem with the Alchemist are these two flasks of healing. I think this was a game design whiff. Obviously, a card that just heals one is terrible. So this is just based around the fact the Alchemist has the Blessed trait, which makes it a heal two, which is still pretty bad, but playable. It's kind of like a block to any, except that, of course, you take any negative effects of the cards the monsters played, which is not that uncommon. It's really quite common that monsters will, for example, heal if the attack connects, or make you discard if the attack connects. So a simple heal is often worse than a block. If this had been anything like damage in a heal, or heal one draw a card, or heal two, and then the blessed on top of that, then it would have been good. Um, now the blessed trait does mean that if you play with my typical strategy of arcane, holy, and growth, a little bit, um, the arcane and holy stuff will have some healing in it, and then you benefit a lot from the blessed trade, and the alchemist can get very, very overpowered. But um, the alchemist is only second place to my favorite class, the barbarian. The barbarian is super sweet. So with the barbarian, you have a whole metric ass ton of damage. Five of the barbarians starting six cards do damage. You do pay for it because two of them hurt you, and you've got, well, three of them hurt you. This one, it makes sense. It makes sense that a three damage card would hurt you, but a two damage card hurting you makes no sense, especially if you compare it to like this, which is two damage and a block versus two damage and you hurt yourself. But the really cool thing about the Barbarian is the Death Wish and the sixth card, the, the Withstand. So Death Wish makes it so the Barbarian has two bonus health against any monster that is a higher level than him. So you actually wanna wait, if you can, until you roll a level two enemy and fight that as your first enemy, and then fight a level three enemy as your second enemy, and you get plus two health against each of them, which makes a huge difference. And then you actually get better loot that way as well, because you're killing higher level enemies. Then Withstand makes it so that you're invulnerable for two rounds. So the way it works is you get to a situation where you and the monster would both die. Instead of playing a damage dealing card and dying, you play with stand. So the monster kills you, but then you come back to life. And then the second round, you play a card, the monster kills you again, you come back to life again, and you kill the monster, and then the fight ends and you win. So it's a really fun way to end it. Oftentimes with all this damage, you don't even need that, but it's still a really cool thing to have. Now to unlock a tier two card, you do have to have two cards of the previous or two things from the previous tier unlocked i'm never going to play as the cat burglar and i'm never going to use the physical damage thing maybe there's a universe where i actually use the trickster's favor which at the highest tier makes it so that you not only get plus one loot choice every time you win a fight but you also start with a level one loot now level one loot is just garbage so it's not that big of a deal but the plus one loot choice slot permanently is you know 
may be okay, because it increases your odds of getting your build together. Probably never going to use it, but it's the only one I can see myself even possibly using. So, let's get the Barbarian. Woo! Okay, we'll talk about the other upgrades, the equipment upgrades, next time we get up to 500 gold. In the meantime, let's go exploring. So, we have the Barbarian. Let's do some of these more challenging things. I think a Minotaur is a great way to start. So, in this mission, there's a Minotaur chasing you, and you have to kill it to win. As before, it's really, really useful to know that you can put monsters in the way of the chasing boss, and that will slow the boss down. It's pretty nifty. Now, we have a little bit of a problem being the Barbarian, because we're actually trying to get up to this Minotaur, which obviously we cannot kill. Even though he has Fury and Decay, we're, we're not going to get there, even with our Death Wish. Can I entice you to go that way? Okay, good. What I'm going to do next is actually put treasure here so I continue to entice the guy away from the Barbarian. And I'm going to hope that putting a monster here to slow the Minotaur down does not make me go to the monster. Okay, good. I'm hoping to draw a level 2 enemy to take advantage of my death wish. And we have a choice of two. Great. So there's the Skeleton and then there's the Mimic. Now, the Skeleton has one more hit point than the Mimic and generally worse cards and the Brutal ability. It's actually not impossible that this will activate because I have a card that deals three damage and the skeleton, I believe, has cards that do damage to himself. So this could be a game-losing mistake here to fight the skeleton instead of the mimic, but I'm going to give it a shot. The mimic, I'm going to put here to slow the final boss down. Now, I can actually totally see a world where... I'm not going to I'm not gonna risk it with the corridor, um, with, with the fountain in it. Um, where I actually just fight a level 3 enemy after this and then fight the Minotaur immediately. It'd be nice to get some extra enemies in to get some better equipment. Okay, so here I'm going to make a little bit of a weird move. I'm going to play the Assault. I don't remember if the Skeleton has magical damage. I don't think he does. But I want to save the Howl for when the Skeleton plays a self-damage dealing card to activate the Brittle. Okay, this is really sad. So the Skeleton does have a magic card and it would have been perfect to block that damage. Um, and stop the healing and stop damage to myself. So that was a mistake and one that I could have fixed if I had known the skeleton's deck. Okay, so there's the self-damaging card we were waiting for. I'm going to take one, two, three damage. So thanks to Death Wish and my Hug in a Bottle, I live instead of dying here. And the skeleton dies because of the Brittle ability. I dealt four damage to it. Well, he took four damage. Three from me, one from himself, and that triggered the Brutality. Okay, this is junk. This is junk. But this is, I mean, it's still not that great. This is actually pretty crappy for a level two item, but we'll take it. It is arcane and fire and we'll we'll work on getting there. Oh yeah, I don't even know what that fountain is. Okay, we got a level three. It's a bandita, which is a hard level three. What is my fountain though? Is it helpful? Unblockable attacks gain one magical damage. I believe I have one unblockable attack. Yep, overpower. So we're gonna fight the bandito. And we'll stick an imp in the way of the boss. Ah, uh, should I stick a Mimic here, too? The question is, am I going to go fight the Mimic? Like, does my guy know to go fight the level 3? I'm not going to risk it. I, I think it's very likely that next round we get another enemy that we can chuck in the way of the Minotaur. Okay, so Bandito has a very strong deck of cards. Let's see what happens here. Head below. If successful, I discard a card. That's a bit sad. The most important thing is the Overpower. This deals an extra damage thanks to the Fountain. I lose my two damage magic attack, which is kind of sad. Um, interesting. So, I'm gonna do this, because if I draw my three damage card, I can kill him, and this doubles my odds of getting it before this guy gets any really strong stuff online. Yeah, there's the Howl, perfect. The Bandito does have one card that's block two physical and then deal three physical, which would have been really, really scary. As it is, though, we just kill him. I'm gonna drink some tea before it gets cold. Hmm. All right, well, this feels bad, but I think putting on armor, overriding my existing armor, feels a bit weird. We're going to take the conch. Now, I, that stupidity is a bad thing, but with this cloak giving arcane 1, the conch's mighty arcane 3 takes me all the way up to the highest tier arcane ability, and if I draw that one, that can compensate for the stupidity while also healing me for 3, so that basically counters almost anything the enemy does. Okay, at this point, I'm happy to just fight the Minotaur. Sadly... I did not get a level 3 enemy. That isn't necessarily a bad thing. 
because by killing a level two, I stay at three, and this boss, I believe, is a level four enemy. So if I stay level three, I'll actually have Death Wish, and you could argue that... Oh, I didn't get my three damage attack, sadly. You could argue that being level three is actually better than being level four, because the extra two hit points I get from having my Death Wish active versus the Minotaur is better than the item that I would get. Oh, I could have just killed him. I didn't pay attention to what his health was. I mean, I'm still going to be fine. This skeleton's never going to do five damage. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so this the twos are now pretty easy. Okay, is this any good? Growth one and a hit point. Well, I don't want to override my armor with worse armor. I don't want to start going for crushing growth, so we're going to go ahead and take the growth and the hit point. That's good. I only drew one monster that round, which is very weird. I could have, could have thrown him in the way of the Minotaur, but I think then uh, it would have gotten in, I would have gone backwards. You know what I'm going to do here? I am going to level up to four. I'm going to judge that... Getting two level three items is better than having Death Wish active, especially when you consider the fact that leveling up gives me a hit point, and Death Wish is two hit points. Oh yeah, so really the, the Death Wish is really just um, only one hit point, so clearly getting level three items is better, as long as I get anything remotely useful. Okay, I'm gonna do some weird stuff here. We're gonna do Mind Strike. This will deal one damage, draw a card, and not activate Fury. Then I'm going to do Focus to add one to my next magic attack, and that'll make my three magic arcane barrage here do four damage and kill him so this thing never goes into fury mode, but that was an absolute slaughter. This wasn't even close. So even with sort of weird items, I'm doing great. Oh my god, we got a wing staff. So the arcane one is wasted because my body item is giving one arcane and my offhand is giving me three, but I'm happy to get up to holy two for an extra good magic damage card and a block. Actually, I might go up to the Minotaur now, mightn't I? I have a feeling I'm gonna go up to the Minotaur. No, I'm going down, okay. Well, there's nothing I can do to put things in the way because I can't like put a monster where I am to block the Minotaur. This is fine though. I'm perfectly happy to fight a Scorpion. Get an extra level three item. What I love here is an armor basically because the body is really just giving me one fire and the arcane that it's giving is wasted. Okay, good start. I had the block to prevent him from healing two. I don't have that much magic block. I have my starting magic one block card, and I think I have, like, a holy card. Well, I should have holy two, so I've got two holy cards that block. Um, let's see. We'll do a card draw. I've got a ridiculous number of hit points. I have the slam that can kill him, but in case he draws physical block, I could have maybe drawn something like overpowered, for example, and gotten through the block. Okay. Well, we got Scale Mail, which trades a good damage card for a physical defense card, but I get two hit points from it. Flintlock is interesting. What do I lose? Hmm. It's interesting. So I lose my I lose, I lose my two holy cards, basically. In exchange, I get two fire. So I go up to fire three, which gives more damage at the expense of some healing and blocking. This just gives me two hit points, though. I kind of like this. Let's just get two hit points. I really feel like with this many hit points, I basically can't lose to the Minotaur, which will be funny now if I lose, but we'll see. So he has Decay, which means if he takes two damage in a round, he takes an extra damage from that. Count the hit points of any monsters that have Fury, so I don't want him to land at five. I'd like him to land at six, and then I want to push him way past six after that. Okay. Well... Let's see, if I do two and he takes another one and another one, that's four. Oh, he'll land exactly at five. Interesting. So I am still going to do it because I think that playing stupidity just to prevent him from activating fury is silly, especially since I do have withstand on hand. Okay, I don't die from taking one, two, three, four. I'm playing a little bit of a loosey-goosey game here, but he's going to take decay damage here, and so I should be able to win with withstand. Okay, so you have to be very careful here, because if you just casually play Howl, you die. Even if Howl weren't self-damaging, you would die, because this thing is dealing three things to his fury. So here's how this works. You play withstand, so you don't die. 
And then you play, as long as any damage gets through, which luckily I have one damaging card, uh, then he dies. That was closer than I thought it would be. If I hadn't drawn with stand, I could have actually lost that round. I mean, if I hadn't drawn with stand, I would have drawn something else. So maybe I would have been in good shape. Okay, we got Mystical, which is what? Ooh, that's good. I love Arcane. And that's not an, it's not an early stage. This is just amazing. Oh, got it. I hope this Barbarian never dies. Because a Barbarian with just Arcane 1 is amazing. So it starts with Mind Strike, which is Magical Damage Draw card. And then any Arcane that you get from there gets gets it up that awesome Arcane tree. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.